And in China, authorities have upheld the death sentence for an American citizen detained for more than a decade. Tonight, his mother pleads for the U.S. State Department to work to set him free. We begin our coverage with News Nation's Marky Martin, who's following the latest details on the detention of Mark Swedan in China. She joins us now from Texas. Marky. Elizabeth, there are 54 Americans wrongfully detained overseas across 16 different countries. And the lesser known story is that there is one American who has been held longer than any other. His name is Mark Swedan, and he's been sitting in a Chinese prison for nearly 11 years, and he is the only American to face a death sentence. Uh, Elizabeth, he's a Texan, he's a businessman, he's an architect, and back in 2012, he was taken from his hotel room, and I sat down one on one with his mother, who was actually on the phone at the time of his arrest. He is still locked up under horrific conditions, waiting to be executed. I was just prayed out and cried out, and now I'm just mad. Sure. For Catherine Swedan, these cryptic drawings so and a few letters are just you. about the only way she's heard from her son for more than a decade. 48 hours spent in hell. The artwork is dark, some done in blood, and astonishingly detailed. Entire cities drawn either from memory or imagination, and a mix of anger, fantasy, and religious undertones from the devout Catholic. He told me, Mom, don't worry if I die because it could be the greatest adventure of all. In a locked cell, roughly 8,000 miles from his home just outside Houston, Mark Swedan sits inside a Chinese prison, held captive on drug-related charges for more than a decade, and the clock is ticking. China has served him a death sentence. In 2012, with the help of his mom, then 37-year-old Mark and his fiance bought a fixer-upper the three had planned to move into after the wedding. The house needed work, and Mark found a factory in Guangzhou, China, selling flooring and fixtures at a much lower cost than he could get at home. He said, Mom, you, you top-of-the-line leather chairs, you can get those for 200 bucks. So he hopped on a plane. And on his last night there, Mark returned to his hotel and called his mom. During that phone call, his room was raided. I heard a glass break, a lot of commotion, but I didn't, couldn't pick out any words. And all I heard Mark say was, What's, what is going on? According to a United Nations investigation, despite a lack of evidence, Mark was accused of colluding with a Mexican cartel to make methamphetamine, and he was thrown into a detention center, eventually resulting in a conviction and in 2019, a death sentence. Just this month, Mark's appeal of his death sentence was denied. Mark is now 48. Based on reports from a government official who recently met with Swedan, he has endured physical and mental abuse at the hands of Chinese authority. Uh, Catherine says her son done. has lost more than 100 pounds, his teeth, and has only slept on cardboard in a cement cell with no heating or air conditioning. He would write and say, Mom, I've never been so cold in my life. They never sleep in the dark. So for almost 11 years, he slept with the lights on the whole time. U.S. lawmakers and the United Nations Human Rights Council consider his charges a farce. But in recent months, other wrongfully detained Americans have garnered considerably more attention than Sweden, who has spent more than a decade waiting to be released. In December, after nearly 10 months behind bars, WNBA player Brittany Griner was released from a Russian detention center in a high-profile prisoner swap. And currently dominating headlines, American journalist Evan Gershkovich, a Wall Street Journal reporter who was arrested in March when Russia accused him of espionage. You know, it's like Mark doesn't exist. Catherine says, unfortunately, her son isn't winning the popularity contest. I think that the government was cherry picking, and I still think they are because I have never been contacted by Biden. Mark has now been held through three U.S. presidents, Obama, Trump, and now Biden. Right now, there is a Texan, Mark Swedan, 
who is a political prisoner. He is a hostage in China. Earlier this year, Rogan Texas here. Senators Ted Cruz and John Catherine Cornyn introduced a resolution yeah. on the floor of the uh, Senate calling on China to release Mark. Last week, in a statement, the U.S. State Department issued this response to the Chinese court's decision to uphold Mark Swedan's death penalty, saying in part, we are disappointed by this decision and will continue to press for his immediate release and return to the United States. President Biden and Secretary Blinken continue to remain personally focused on the release of Mark Swedan and other U.S. nationals wrongfully detained or held hostage across the world. And until then... Catherine holds on to hope that her child's chance at freedom will one day come. Because he told me one time, I'll come home in a box of ashes or I'll come home walking off a plane, Mom, but I will come home. And Elizabeth, uh, his mom told me that with his death sentence appeal denied this month, she doesn't know what the next steps are. She doesn't know where to turn except for to try to keep his name in the headlines. And she does feel like that clock is ticking. His execution is scheduled two years from now. Elizabeth. Wow. All right. Hey, Marky, it's important to know that he's not the only American being held in China. There are two others. Yeah, that's correct. Mark is one of three. You also have Chinese American Kai Lee, who has been held in a Shanghai prison since 2016. Uh, he has been uh, held on spying charges, which, which he denies. He's serving a 10 year sentence. And then you also have an American pastor by the name of David Lin. He's been held there since 2006. Elizabeth. Marky Martin, thanks for that report tonight. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.